Hello, welcome back to the Huawei Routing and Switching HCIE Elite Training. Today, topic I'm focused on the VLAN. My name is Yap Chiyuan. I'm the instructor for the HCIE, and let's start the lesson now. All right. So today, topic we will look into the VLAN. I believe most of you already know what is a VLAN, which is stand for Virtual Local Area Network. And uh, basically, at the high level, VLAN divide physical LAN into multiple broadcast domain. As its name suggests, VLAN is a virtual. All right, so we are creating multiple virtual VLAN over a physical LAN. Hosts in different VLAN cannot communicate among themselves unless through a layer three device. VLAN technology limit broadcast domain enhance LAN security and improve network robustness. I'm going to look into more detail on the features on the VLAN. Now our topic here, the main objective is to understand VLAN. We'll look into the configuration of how you can configure VLAN in Huawei device, improve the troubleshooting capabilities, We'll look into some of the uh, VLAN capabilities like the uh, Max VLAN or Super VLAN, and we also will look into some of the exam uh, skill that is needed for your HCIE exam. Right, these are the content that I will be cover for this session. I will look into the VLAN principle, the configuration CLI, the VLAN troubleshooting. We will look into some cases as well as uh, VLAN prepare, uh, the uh, VLAN exam preparation. All right, let's look into the uh, content. First, we are going to look into the VLAN principle. I'm going to cover the very basic concept of the VLAN. Uh, most of you already know what is a VLAN. All right, so this is uh, just to recap what you already learned. VLAN communication principles. Then we are looking into the VLAN aggregation. And finally, we look into the Max VLAN. Okay, so let's look into the uh, VLAN here. So in this diagram, I have two switches, switch one and switch two. And switch one, switch two connect to four PC. We have PC one and PC two that's belong to VLAN two. And we have PC three and the PC four that's belong to VLAN three. Now the main purpose of the VLAN is to divide our physical into multiple logical LAN. Now, as you can see from here, I have two different switches. Now, if I do not have a VLAN, all of these are belong to a single broadcast domain, which means that if I have a broadcast here, all right, this broadcast will send to every single uh, network, or in this case, the network device in the same broadcast domain. All right, so that if let's say I only have a uh, one VLAN, or in this case, I have no VLAN. All right, but once I divide them into two logical VLAN or virtual LAN, you can see that if PC1 here broadcast, all right, this broadcast will send through a trunk and the broadcast will only send to those that is belong to the same VLAN. So the main purpose of the VLAN, that's the first thing that in your mind here, is that we divide a physical LAN into a multiple broadcast domain. So here I have two broadcast domains, so VLAN 3 and uh, VLAN 2 here. In fact, they also have one more that is uh, what we call the default VLAN. All right. Uh, in Huawei, we call it as a PVID 1. That is our default VLAN. Now, second, um, you can see that the VLAN limit the broadcast packet in a VLAN. Now, similar to what I mentioned earlier on, VLAN divide the LAN into multiple broadcast domain. Assuming that now PC1 have a broadcast DOM. All right, this broadcast DOM, if I do not have a VLAN, it will affect every single network in this uh, particular topology. Now, once I have a VLAN, what will happen here is this particular VLAN that I have, which is a VLAN tree, will not be affected, even though I have a broadcast DOM that will affect the uh, PC2 or any uh, network uh, that is attached to VLAN 2. So that, because I have a VLAN, I limit the broadcast packet. And because of this, I also have increased security. Now, the reason I mentioned about the uh, increase of security is because that if I'm going to do an ARP 
or sometimes there's what we call up poisoning. All right, I can use this up poisoning to attack my other host within the same VLAN. So by using a VLAN, I can increase the security. And uh, one last features of the VLAN here is because the VLAN is configurable, all right, which means that I can specify what is the port, all right, and uh, what type of VLAN I am. So this is a VLAN 3, then this is a G01, this is a VLAN 2. So I have the flexibility when I have a VLAN. So basically, the VLAN allows you to have the security, the flexibility, you, are, you can um, create multiple broadcast domain, as well as you can limit the broadcast packet within a VLAN. All right, so let's examine the content of the VLAN tag. The VLAN tag identifies a VLAN that packet belong to. Now we can examine from this particular format. This is our frame. This is the L2 frame. Now you notice that in L2 frame, we have our destination MAC address and the source MAC address. Now what it does in 802.1Q is that it insert a four byte uh, content into the Ethernet frame. And this four byte consists of this four section. The first session here is the TPID or what we call the tag protocol identifier. Now this tag protocol identifier identify what type of Ethernet frame or what type of frame is this. If this is the Ethernet frame, then the uh, tag protocol identifier will be 0x8100. 0x means that it is a hexadecimal number and this is 2 byte. Okay. Next, we have the PRI. PRI stands for priority. All right, this priority have three bit. So basically, we have zero to seven. Okay, that will be the priority under the L2. Next, we have a CFI. CFI stands for canonical format indicator. All right, now, um, when we look into the CFI, the CFI normally is a zero. Zero indicate that this is a Ethernet. Now, if it's anything other than zero, assuming that it's one, it can be uh, the format is FDDI or it can be a token ring. All right, so that's the main purpose of a canonical format indicator. And most important is this one, all right, VID, or what we call the VLAN identifier. Okay, as you can see that the VLAN ID consists of 12 bits. So if you use 2 to the power of 12, we will have 4096. The VLAN start from 0 all the way to 4095. Okay, now 0 and 4095 is reserved. Alright, so the usable VLAN is from 1 to VLAN 4094. Okay, now all these are comply with the 802.1Q uh, IEEE standard. And you also can see that L two one Q capable can capable switch can send and receive tag and untag frame, so the frame can be tagged or untagged. So those that is the tag most likely will be a trunk port. All right, those that is untagged will be your SS port. Internal data packet of the switch do carry tag as well. Now let's just examine uh, one of the Wireshark to show you the content of the 802.1Q. Alright, so I capture some of the um, ping command through the trunk port. Now, as you can see that uh, if let's say I go into the STP here, this is my spanning tree. As you can see that there is no uh, 802.1Q. Alright, but it, I do have it in my ARP as you can see the ARP and ICMP, we do have the 802.1Q. Let me expand this particular frame and I'll show you. Okay, so this is one of the frame on the ICMP. Now firstly, you can see that this is my layer 2. Okay, you'll notice here we have 802.1Q VLAN 8x 0x8100. That's the hexadecimal number, which is a 2 byte 16 bit. Now just below here, we insert this additional 16-bit 
And this 16-bit consists of priority that I mentioned here, 0 to 7. Okay, we have 3-bit. We have a CFI, stand for Canonical Format Indicator. 0 here indicate that this is an Ethernet frame. And this is the most important part here. I'm using a VLAN 2 for my uh, demonstration purpose here. As you can see here, we have the 12-bit of the VLAN ID. And this is a IP type, which gives us 0x0800. So that indicate our 802.1Q frame that is inserted. And I do capture this in a trunk port. All right, so let's look into the uh, link type here. Here we have two link type, access link and a trunk link. Let's examine what is access link. An access link usually connect to a host, um, a host to a switch and transmit untagged frame. Now in this diagram, I have four hosts, host one, host two, host three, and host four. As you can see that host one and host two belong to VLAN two and the host 3 and host 4 belong to VLAN 3. Now when the host connect to the switch, uh, it will send as a untagged VLAN. All right? So we call that as an access link. This is the access link that we need to define. Now when the switch know that this is a VLAN 2, it will add a VLAN and send it across the trunk link. So we have a trunk over here. You notice that the VLAN is being attached and sent over the trunk. Now once the switch tree receives the VLAN, it will determine which port that this VLAN 2 belong to. One is determined that the PC2 is belong to VLAN 2, it's going to send out this frame and remove the tag before it's sent out to the host. So the host doesn't know about the VLAN tag. All right, the tag is being configured in a switch. So we have the access link and the trunk link. As you can see the here, trunk link usually connect a switch to another switch or a router. So this can be a router if you want to connect a switch to a router. This also can be a trunk. All right, assuming that if you want the tag to be sent together. All right, so here we learn that we have two type of link, access link and a trunk link. All right, so continue from our interface type. All right, just now you already see that uh, we have the access link and the trunk link. Here I'm going to show you that there is three type of the uh, interface that we have in Huawei. All right, so access link typically connect to the host, trunk link typically connect to the switch or even to the router. Okay, now next we have the hybrid interface. Hybrid interface connect to a host or another switch. That's why it called a hybrid. Okay, in another word, hybrid can act as an access or it can be act as a trunk. Now in this example, PC1 connect to switch 1 as an access interface. Okay, switch to switch as a trunk interface. So here we also have a trunk. Here, you notice that we configure this as a hybrid interface and by default, uh, Huawei port default to hybrid. Now hybrid basically means that you can do a tag or untag. All right, so in the hybrid environment, you can make it as a trunk when you do a tag. It will behave as an SS when you do an untag. All right, so that's basically is an hybrid interface. Now, I believe that most of you will be very familiar with the VLAN and how the VLAN is being assigned. Here, I show you that in Huawei, we have multiple ways for us to assign VLAN. Let's look into the first one. The first one will be based on interface. All right, this is the most common one. So principle here is that VLAN are assigned based on interface number. Difference PVID, all right, are configured for switched interfaces that is an interface belong to VLAN by default. So PVID basically referring to the ID that attached to the interface. It is simple to define, okay, and VLAN must be reconfigured when VLAN member change location. So this is the disadvantage. All right, so we know that this is 
the uh, most common way of the administrator configure user to the VLAN interface. Now we also can use MAC address based VLAN. So basically it means that instead of the interface that I'm assigned the VLAN, I'm going to base on the MAC address to assign the VLAN. Okay. So when physical location or user changes, you do not need to reconfigure the VLAN. The reason is because that the switch will look up the MAC address for them to assign the VLAN. Okay. The disadvantage is this mode require that network adapter seldom change and VLAN member be predefined. Okay. So we have a very uh, good features over here, which is based on the MAC address. But sometimes we do have the uh, notebook or computer fail. Then you have to redo your MAC address because this is being defined statically. Next, we have the VLAN based on subnet. That's right. We can base on the IP subnet to assign the VLAN. All right. So what's the disadvantage of this is that it reduces the configuration burden. All right. And IP address need to be planned in advance. But definitely uh, the security is not in play here. All right. Because I can change the IP and that means that I'm changing my VLAN. Now, the fourth method that we can assign the VLAN is through the protocol. Now, we can assign different VLAN to a suite of different protocol. All right. So VLAN are based on the protocol, all right, a suit or protocol encapsulation format. All right, it can be in IPv4, IPv6, IPX, Apple Talk. Okay, so if let's say in the environment you do have different set of protocol and you want to give them different VLAN, you can actually use the uh, protocol based VLAN. This mode facilitate management and maintenance. And again, you have to do it manually. And finally, if let's say you have a complex environment where you have IP, you have a uh, based on this uh, IP subnet, based on the protocol, for example, and based on the MAC, a combination of different type of assignment, then you can use policy base. Now policy base is a combination of all these uh, assignment method. And uh, if you want to have high priority or high security, sorry, then you can actually use these uh, policy based assignment. And uh, this advantage over here is that each policy need to be manually configured. Now, there's a problem over here. Assuming that now you have um, in the switch have the interface based VLAN, MAC address based VLAN, subnet based protocol or with the policy, and they do have a conflict. So which one? will take precedent? Well, the next slide will tell you the answer. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.